My name is Frank Bredek. I'm the track chair uh, for today. Um, with us, Karsten, Nadim, and David from HP Fortify, talking about uh, well, one of the themes of yesterday's keynotes as well, uh, acquiring software and, and the security touch points in that. OK, thanks, Frank. Um, yeah, so my name is Karsten Huth. Um, I'm, I'm, we are all, as Frank said already, with HP Fortify. I'm uh, currently leading the Fortify EMEA professional services practice. Um, and My name is Nadim. I'm part of uh, Karsten's, Karsten's group, uh, part of the professional services group, basically. We do some um, code reviews and work with, basically, our clients to um, help them with their security programs. Thank you. Yeah, so my name is David Sroka. I'm also in Karsten's team. Uh, as a software security consultant since three years already. Yeah, so, well, with that, thanks again for joining the session uh, and welcome. And so, well, first of all, maybe quickly about our colleagues from, from the HP booth uh, handed around here some uh, uh, customer survey. So if you don't mind, or if you have some time filling this in and just uh, one quick remark about that at the, at the bottom here on the, on the Second page, it, it says uh, statistic application security. So that's, we know that it's supposed to be called <laughs> static application security. That's a typo that crept in there. So um, just, uh, yeah, OK. <laughs> yeah, rum time. Yeah, <laughs> that's not, not bad as well. <laughs> Oh, have you? Yeah. Did you print another? Oh, excellent. OK. <laughs> yeah. OK, so, well, so just a brief overview of the topics we want to cover today. So firstly, introduce into the context of uh, this, this talk, uh, give the problem definition um, of what we want to talk about, and then focus more on the software de development lifecycle and security touch points. And then uh, about uh, Nadim, we'll then talk more about in more detail about the acquisition process, and then we want to draw some conclusions from this. And just to, um, to, to mention this at the beginning, this, this was based from, on some research we did with uh, one of our customers, which was, is E.ON, uh, which is an energy big, well, quite big energy supplier in um, in, in different countries in Europe. Uh, I think they're headquartered in Germany. And um, we, were, we are working together with them on a security improvement program. And this was one, one part of that to develop um, best practices and recommendations about security touch points when acquiring software. And so this, um, what we see as the, the context of this is that today's landscape of um, of software development is, is a combination of uh, acquiring components through different ways and, and developing com components. And sometimes you have whole solutions that are developed or whole solutions that are acquired. Um, and so there's, there's different types of uh, um, acquisitions. So there's the commercial off the shelf software. Uh, there's made to order, so where you, where you basically define your requirements and then outsource or contract the the software development. And then, of course, there's parts of, of uh, solutions that, that can be open source. And, um, and also, in some cases, software is forced upon uh, companies due to mergers and acquisitions. So they, they, get, they have to use software that was used by another part of the, uh, of the organization, which now becomes part of, of, uh, of a new organization. Um, and then, obviously, also software obtained for free. Um, and um, so then wh the decision whether to acquire or, or develop a software is normally should be business driven and, and a cost benefit decision. So you, you analyze the cost of developing software versus um, what the costs are to, to acquire software on the market and then um, draw the decision based on that uh, what, what's, what's the best uh, option for the business. Um, so now what we want to, what we want to focus on uh, in this talk is 
what should the security touch points be when acquiring software. So from our point of view, that's often a bit overlooked. There's a lot of talk about, a lot of focus on what the security touch points are when, when developing software. Um, but not so much what, what the security activities should be when, when acquiring software. So for that, we looked at the, um, the, the acquisition process and looked at how that matches to the software development lifecycle. And there's uh, some of that runs sort of in parallel and there's, there's, uh, they are somewhat aligned, um, but obviously there are also phases in both, um, ti in, in both processes that, uh, that don't have a, uh, an equivalent in, in the other part. So uh, we'll look at this in more detail on, on, the, on one of the next couple of slides. Um, and then the, the acquisition process is part of, of software assurance and then that, again, is part of, of systems assurance in general. So we, what we took at, as a starting point, and I think most of you have probably seen this, uh, the security touch points um, for developing software uh, from, from Gary McGraw's book, Building Security um, In. Uh, who of you has, has not seen this before? Okay, so pretty much most of you have seen this. So that's uh, the security touch points well, postulated by Gary McGraw um, for, for developing software, which are code review um, and um, architecture risk analysis. So in sort of the earlier phases um, is risk an analysis, then security uh, risk-based security tests, and what we all sort of, we focus a lot on code review and, and uh, security testing. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the, what we consider as sort of the normal security activities when developing software. So then we looked at this um, and uh, had a look at how this changes in the context of acquiring software. So which components of this process are more in the responsibility of the acquirer and which are more in the responsibility of the supplier of the software. So some of these, so we move these, basically draw a basic swim lane diagram here and move these boxes according to where we see the responsibility in the uh, acquisition, or well, in the software development lifecycle, to be precise here. So some of it, for example, uh, the, the uh, coding, the development is responsive in the responsibility of the supplier and then uh, eliciting the security, the, sorry, the requirements is um, more the responsibility of the, uh, of the acquirer. Um, and then some of them are somehow shared responsibility. That's why we put them in the middle between those swim lanes here. And then we t went a step further and uh, looked at how these, these activities or phases um, can be mapped to the acquisition process. So the acquisition process here consists of, of planning, um, contracting, monitoring and acceptance and follow on. And then we, when looking at what this, how this maps to the, to the software development lifecycle, there's the, the first couple of phases are part of the planning phase. Contracting doesn't really have an equivalent uh, in, the, in the software development lifecycle. I mean, because it's just the development lifecycle, not the whole software lifecycle. Um, and then monitoring acceptance is from our point of view mapped to, to coding and testing um, and acceptance. Um, and then feedback from the field is part of follow on from in the acquisition process. So then we went one step further. Oh, and we also aligned here the, the um, security activities with, with, with this. Um, and then we went another step further and looked at which security activities um, should be performed in which phases of the acquisition process, and then also uh, added the, the activities of the acquisition process as such. So here the, in dark gray, the, that are the, the acquisition process activities, and in light gray, the, the security activities. Um, so that's kind of the first step to align these two, and then Further, we um, looked at, again, at the, the security, now at the security activities um, of, as part of the software development lifecycle and what, 
what from our point of view changes uh, if you apply them to the to, to security touch points for acquiring software. So I don't want to go through all of this in detail, but just to pick a few examples. So for example, security requirements when for software made to order is from our point of view fairly similar because you still, as an as a, um, acquirer, still need to develop the security requirements. Um, so there's, there's no big difference here. But whereas code review, for example, if you have um, cust uh, um, commercial off-the-shelf software, um, you normally don't have access to the source code, of course, so you can't do code review yourself. Um, so then one option here would be to consider requesting the, um, the supplier to, to do a code review and share the result with you. So that, that code review would have to be done by a third party, and um, so that's, that's one case here. And then uh, another case um, for code review in, uh, for made-to-order software um, is to, to possibly negotiate uh, during the contracting phase already that you get access to the source code for, for doing code review. So just to pick a few examples, so we, we looked at these, all of these cases and, and gave our recommendations um, what, from our point of view, should be done uh, for, for any, each of these cases. All right, and with this, I hand over to Nadim um, to look at the acquisition process in more detail. Thanks. Oops, I'm going this way. Thank you, Carsten. Okay, so uh, as Carsten was saying, I will be taking us through the acquisition process in uh, a little more de detail. So uh, if you think back to the previous slide, there were several different components or different pieces. So if I'll just go back quickly to it. Um, what I'll focus on is the part on the bottom here. Uh, and just describe those in a little more detail and try to draw out some of the uh, security touch points as we go through those. Um, so of course, the first part, as you can see up on the top here, is the planning phase. Um, and it's really broken up to just a few uh, simple steps. Uh, the first being trying to figure out the logistics, uh, sorry, uh, deciding what you need, so what you're gonna acquire and why you're acquiring it. Um, and then develop specific security requirements for um, that item or that system that you want to be running. And then, uh, of course, setting out your schedule and your plan to actually acquire that system uh, and ensure that it manage, uh, that it matches what you wanted uh, to acquire. Um, and then finally, having some kind of criteria to accept this. So we'll, we'll go into each of these steps in just uh, slightly more detail. Uh, the first is determining your need and figuring out exactly or putting together um, a set of goals uh, that you want to achieve um, and, and being distinct about them. So you're trying to gather more context about the application. Uh, what is it going to be uh, used for? Is it going to be a web-based application? Is it going to be um, maybe a batch processing system in the back end? Uh, so that context helps you figure out um, more about the, the system's layout so sort of the lay of the land, um, which then helps you in the next step, which is figuring out uh, your security requirements, which is the next slide. Uh, when, you're, when you're thinking about your security requirements, you want to look at the risk uh, posed by the application or by the system that you're gonna be uh, running, which means we need to first figure out what are our use cases, and which is what we've possibly done in the previous slide. Uh, and then build the abuse cases and think about the security requirements for that system, right? Um, by s assessing what kind of assets it's gonna be processing, uh, thinking about the adverse um, conditions that might, might be opposed uh, or, or, or can uh, affect uh, th those assets, and figuring out what kind of controls or measures that you want in the system, so sort of your security requirements. Um, out of this, you would come out with something of a, maybe a risk rating or a category for this application. Now, depending on the, um, the maturity of the organization, you might have um, a standard or a uh, guideline for what type of requirements to present for a particular project like this one, right? You might go and have uh, this document that says, okay, high risk applications, uh, you have to think of such and such and such, and if um, it requires multiple users, um, it needs to use this type of identity, ma identity management framework, for instance. So th those might be framework, um, sorry, requirements that you're gonna already have. Um, but potentially you won't have that particular standard or benchmarking to go back to, so you might have to build your own requirements, um, which you will 
in either case, right? Because you want to have specific um, controls and measures that that address the particular threats of your system, right? Um, so eventually, you're going to have to build uh, requirements specific to that system, and there, therefore, you will go through a bunch of um, known methods of gathering requirements, right? So it's just a, a gathering information, sorry, uh, requirements gathering process. Um, the one of the ways that we found uh, a lot of customers or a lot of groups will use is the square method. Now, this is a method developed by um, a research group, group in Carnegie Mellon. Uh, it's a nine-step process, and this is an, a sample of it. Um, I won't go into detail with the process itself, but it's something that you might want to look up. Um, I believe the next slide we have a source for you. Uh, to go check it out. But uh, the nice folks that created this process, they've also created a modified process for the acquisition. Uh, so if you're building requirements for an, acquisi um, an acquisition, yeah, for software that you're acquiring. Um, additionally, yeah, and additionally, they've made a tool, a web-based tool that you can use to gather the requirements and maybe build uh, some more artifacts on that. What are those artifacts that you might need? Uh, possibly an assurance case. So what are can anybody quickly tell me what an assurance case is, or is that something that rings a bell? So it's sort of like proof that a particular assurance um, or a particular case is handled, right? It's, it assures you that uh, we don't have cross-site scriptings, which is pretty difficult, right? But at least if you provide me a, uh, with a security report or a static analysis report or a pen test report, it might give me some kind of confidence uh, that you might not have those types of issues in your code. So it's a, it's, it's a slight guarantee. It wouldn't be a complete guarantee, but it's some sort of a, uh, evidence. So that, that would be uh, part of the requirements uh, gathering phase is that you think about, well, how do I ensure that these requirements have been fulfilled, right? Like an uh, evaluation criteria. Now, um, once you've figured out, of course, the security category and what kind of um, requirements you want to give, uh, the suppliers, uh, you have to also consider your situation uh, from a risk perspective. Uh, if you've identified risks, how are you going to handle them? Uh, and depending on the type of software that you've chosen to go, to go with, so if it's a COTS program uh, or a custom-made program, uh, you might have different ways of managing or dealing with a risk. And then there might be trade-offs with each strategy that you take. Okay, so, and then the next step here is just to actually plan the acquisition process. Now, a lot of this is just generic stuff that you will have to run through whether you're thinking about security or not, but the ones in blue are mainly the ones that you want to uh, map back to your security touch points. So the second one here is allowing time for, for security testing and thinking about security testing while you're planning for the acquisition. Uh, the other point is to not just accept any kind of um, guarantee or any kind of assurance, but rather try to get, get a customized assurance, maybe like uh, demand particular testing for the application within the context that you want to run it in, right? So possibly in your own production, I'm sorry, QA environment, right? Um, running your own configura configuration of it because it might be a different one than uh, the ones that they've already tested it for, certified it for. And then, naturally, the next step would be to create the request for, propo for proposals, um, to identify what you want um, your suppliers to provide you with, so what kind of certifications or qualifications you want them to furnish. Um, set ex basically, set expectations to your suppliers, right? Now, that, that sort of concludes the first part of the process, uh, which was the planning phase. Now, we look at the contracting phase, which is um, that second step. Uh, in this step, you look at, well, you basically issue the RF RFPs, uh, you gather the responses, you uh, evaluate the responses, and you basically decide on who's going to uh, provide you with the software or the system or build it for you or whatever you've decided to do. Uh, important things to think about is that to ensure that your RFP uh, clearly states what work 
you expect them to do, which means having the proper requirements in there and uh, ensuring your suppliers understand them. Um, setting terms and conditions, so things like uh, is it going to be tested, uh, what kind of tests we, we need you to provide, and evidence and so on. Uh, maybe some certifications um, and, and possibly even a pre-qualification uh, test. Um, you want to involve subject mat matter experts, so people who know or maybe have worked on similar projects and they can guide you through uh, the different aspects of uh, acquiring similar software. Uh, some of the tools that are available to you are on the Build Security In website. They have a due diligence uh, questionnaire, which helps you, depending on the type of the software that you're acquiring, uh, gives you a set of security concerns to address um, with the questions that go with those concerns. So on this next slide, uh, those are actually the set of concerns that they try to um, bring up. So an example would be, what is the company's security track record? Are they known for software that has um, had a lot of vulnerabilities? Uh, what is their timeliness in mitigating these vulnerabilities? Do they come around quick when there's a zero day? Um, how about their developers? Do they, do they provide them with the necessary tools and uh, awareness to write secure and defensive code? Right? Um, so lots of points to consider. Um, you would definitely not do this for all your suppliers. You would probably do it just for the shortlisted suppliers. So have them fill out those questionnaires or the sections that you deem relevant for you, um, and then use that to select uh, the winner, right? This is, so if I go back to these concerns, these are sort of the descriptions. Uh, they give you an idea of why you're, you're looking at that concern. So an example might be, uh, an individual malicious behavior, so possibly a rogue developer introducing a backdoor into your code, um, that might be a risk, right? That might be a risk that uh, if you're developing, might take place, or if even your supplier is developing, they might have the same issue. And then the questions you would ask would, would roam around, how do you control your source code? Um, do you have code reviews, uh, peer reviews, uh, and so on, right? And so on, so I won't go through each one of them, uh, because I think we're running out of time quickly. Um, so since we're in the contracting phase now, uh, we've gotten the RFPs, we, uh, sorry, we've gotten the proposals, we've reviewed them, we've decided uh, which ones uh, make, um, make the grade, and we start to contract uh, with that supplier. Some of the touch points you want to consider include things like ensuring the, the vendor will provide you with the proper documentation. So once the system is running, you want to be able to operate it and you want to keep it secure as it's running. Uh, so some terms to in guaranteeing that this will happen. Uh, you want them to, again, like we just mentioned, you want them to fix zero days and, and things that suddenly appear in the, oper uh, in the field, right? When you're running it and something breaks, uh, you want to make sure that they have your back at that time. Uh, possibly, so like Carson had mentioned, uh, having access to the source code so you can have so you can perform your own validation of the deliverables, right? Um, and possibly allowing them uh, to give you to, to be willing to ask them to be willing uh, to support you if you're modifying the code, if you want to change it, or if you need to uh, add more use cases in the future, right? Uh, that depends on how long you imagine that software is going to be running, and if you have a a migration plan in the future, again, you might want to involve them or um, have, have some kind of terms to keep them um, at your side at that time. Uh, one good example is actually on the OWASP website. So there is an annex uh, for a contract. It's, you wouldn't copy and paste it, but you would use it to talk with legal and develop a contract that um, basically covers you uh, w while acquiring software. And with this, I hand it over to David, who's going to take us through the next um, part of the acquisition process. Thank you, Nadim. Uh, yes, yeah, so um, I'll cover the <clears throat> last two uh, phases of the acquisition process, uh, starting with monitoring and acceptance. Uh, so the contract is in place. The software is probably being developed right now. So we have to monitor the progress of the development. Uh, for that, we establish a work schedule uh, to make sure yeah, 
things are getting done on time and there are reports being uh, provide, provided uh, pre periodically. Um, we also implement some change control and review and eventually accept the de deliverables. So, as I mentioned, schedule is, uh, should include specific uh, dates, a, a timeline for meeting uh, the, the requirements uh, which have, have been um, established uh, for security. And uh, change control would then uh, ensure that uh, the requirements are actually not compromised whenever a change is introduced into the system, uh, being in the software being developed. Um, So, and when, we, when there are deliverables, uh, not, not, not only the software, the application that, that has been contracted, um, it's also the, the documentation and the uh, test cases which have been uh, done and the results of, of running those, those tests. And uh, eventually you have to, when you want to accept such, such deliverables, you have to make sure the criteria for doing that are pretty explicit and, and measurable, so you can clearly decide, yeah, this is something I, I'm, I'm willing to, to accept, and they're in, in, included in, in the contract, in the terms of, uh, and conditions of the contract. So there's an example of acceptance criteria with a lot of shall and shall not, um, about the if, if functionality of, of, of the software uh, when in a certain configuration of uh, operating system middleware and uh, there is also information that should not be, uh, in this example at least, uh, that the supply should not modify any, any configuration settings when there is an update, so part of the change control, unless it's authorized by the, by the acquirer. And uh, the subject matter experts should review the, 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 res, the, the, deliver, the deliverables and uh, look at the test results which have been provided by the supplier and uh, the tests can also be done by an, uh, third party testers and they probably should in, yeah, include best include both uh, static uh, uh, testing and dynamic uh, analysis or penetration testing um, <coughs> so if, if, the, if the testing is done by a third party uh, that's an, an, another uh, round for for uh, choosing such a, such a supplier for security testing and the criteria for, for, this, for, the, for the decision, which one should do that testing uh, is based on, on, on the following facts. I mean, you have to look at the reputation uh, in, in, the, in the industry, um, the, which methods are being used, will be used to, to test the software, um, the references, if there has been tests done already, I mean, this is, should probably be from, from the industry you are working in and, and, and the software should, should be, the types of soft software should match. So if, if this third, pass, third party um, tester <coughs> uh, will, will uh, has an experience in testing back end systems and probably you wouldn't like to have them test your web uh, application, web front end. Um, yeah. And as I mentioned, the common services would be provided by such a supplier would be a static code analysis, static application security testing, dynamic testing, and penetration, and then also uh, security architecture and design review. <coughs> so the last uh, phase of the acquisition process is the follow-on. Uh, so maintenance of the software, it's already been deployed, and uh, eventually the decommissioning of, 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 of the software. Um, so talking about maintaining the software, right, you have to think about patches and prepare for the, for, for the long run, depending how long is the, the software is supposed to be uh, used. Um, because yeah, changes in the software, so software updates, configuration changes, the application, uh, op the OS updates, um, for example, may invalidate your, your assumptions. An example of this would be if the security requirements state that uh, 
security com communication should be used over SSL version one or two, maybe even three. So it was 10 years ago, we pre I mean, pretty perfectly fine. Nowadays, we know uh, from, from the, um, that this is no longer secure. We have to kind of uh, adjust to the, to, to the use and, uh, and switch to the TLS uh, secure communication. <clears throat> so whenever upgrade and patches support, if this is also has been con uh, contractually uh, uh, established, is an important uh, part of, 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 of the, of the uh, maintenance um, phase of the acquisition process. So that, that will, be co will be covered by the uh, SLA terms. What happens when there is a critical issue found in the field? What with the, the reaction time uh, of the supplier to, to provide a patch and 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 and, and uh, yeah and so on. Uh, finally, you have to dispose of the software, right? It has end of life, um, the stage no, five, ten years perhaps. Um, so, software has to be yeah probably is not so important, the software as much as the data which it, 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 it has. So you have to decide if it's supposed to be migrated to the, to the new system and then eventually destroyed or maybe archived if, if such are the uh, compliance requirements. Uh, so for recap of, of, of the presentation, uh, the decision of whether to acquire or develop a software and application on your own, it's a, it's a business-driven business decision, decision based on a cost-benefit uh, cost analysis. Um, and when you're acquiring, you have to think about the business criteria. This is quite normal, of course. Functionality, performance, stability, but also about the security criteria. Um, <clears throat> and in this presentation, we have outlined the, the touch points that the, there's pretty good match between the, the touch points uh, can be can be applied to the acquisition process, just just as as where uh, as they normally applied to the software development uh, lifecycle, and highlighting where this 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 um, security <coughs> touch points can be applied exactly. Um, there is, I mean, the, the phases of the acquisition uh, that we have highlighted will be the planning, contracting, monitoring, acceptance, and eventually follow on. And uh, for each of, of the phases, as in the, the contract is the, is the key component, is the key document that should cover uh, at least from even up to the, to the follow on to the maintenance of the software to, to ensure that the, the supplier, the vendor of the software is, is uh, committed to it. Concluding uh, the presentation, um, it's important to apply the touch points for, to building a secure, to build secure software to the acquisition process. Once again, um, use a risk-driven approach when selecting uh, suppliers, so questionnaires, as Adi mentioned, and uh, both for um, off-the-shelf software, commercial off-the-shelf software, and also for custom-made, made-to-order, and. Uh, Security testing require, of course, recommended to do both static and dynamic uh, an analysis um, to make, and this, 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 the, the, test, the test reports should not, not only be provided at the end of, of the development, but also periodically to make sure there is a progress, there is to identify quickly any problems that may ensue. And um, finally, to introduce uh, security, um, focus terms and conditions into in the contract for, for the acquisition. That's an important part, and it should be not, not only as an annex, uh, as in the OWASP example, it should be part, uh, integral part of the, of the acquisition contract. Um, just a brief mention, what have we done uh, uh, actually in, in to develop this topic? There were fra fragments, fragments of, of uh, like the square methodology for creating security requirements. We have kind of put it all together. I mean, there was no best practice uh, for the whole process. Uh, 
we, we have seen that there are overlaps be between the development and the acquisition process regarding security and uh, we are hoping to, uh, to, 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 to build a gauge system that can uh, easily help us identify aspects to, to consider uh, for the different system development scenarios, if it's commercial, if it's uh, open source perhaps, or just downloaded for free, or made to order. And the sources for your reference, and that will be it. Any questions? Yeah, uh, thank you. Are there any audience questions? Okay. Um, because of a shortage of mics, I'll shout it out and then we'll repeat it for the camera. Do you see a trend of businesses developing new software with third parties management? So the question was if um, we see a trend in uh, that companies develop, uh, sorry, acquire software, rather develop them, uh, it themselves, just like Frank said, repeating the question. Um, well, I mean, we see that there's more of a mix uh, nowadays where, where some components are, are uh, acquired and other components are developed yourself. So um, you hardly have a scenario, I think, where, where everything, well, unless, I mean, other, in some cases you acquire everything, but then in, even if you develop the software, there's often components that, that are part of, um, that are acquired, like whatever it might be, enterprise service, bus technology, um, some uh, communication, um, co other communication uh, uh, technology, business modules, linking into another wire web services, into another system and so on, uh, acquiring services. So, and then part of this, I think, also applies to, to components. I mean, you probably wouldn't use the whole, um, depending on the size and of the components you want to integrate, you wouldn't probably integrate use everything of this unless you have really sort of an RFP process and so on, but parts of that, it's always worth looking at it and considering the, the, the um, what Nadim mentioned, the, the uh, things that to, to be aware of um, and, and to consider what should be looked at, what should be the security requirements for compound you integrate. So yeah, trend, I think a trend is more from my point of view more that there's a mix, um, often more often a mix of, of both. You think every, anything to add? Then Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. More questions? I think you had. Oh, yeah, there's another question there. Okay. Yeah. So again, to, to summarize uh, the question, so the question is if you have, uh, if you acquire a company uh, um, which will, has been a startup, um, they often don't have such a rigorous uh, security process as kind of the, the bigger companies uh, that, that acquires a smaller company and how, uh, what we would say about reconciling um, that kind of gap in, in the maturity of, of a security process. So, I mean, firstly, uh, what I would say is that what we are talking here about mainly was about acquiring software, not... Uh, yeah, yeah, no, uh, yeah, I mean, so what we were focusing on mainly is about acquiring software, uh, not whole, a whole company, but that's part of it. I, no, I was, um, so, but the security processes of, of, the, of the acquired company, well, I mean, if you have the, the bigger company that has more mature, um, I think it uh, has more mature security process. I think it's, it's uh, um, well, actually, we have kind of been in a, in a similar situation. Uh, as, as we are, yeah, as we as HP Fortify, I mean, uh, some of us were, were already at HP Fortify at the time when, when we were acquired by HP, so it's, it's sort of a transition period. You can't do it in one day, so you have to do it step by step and also risk-driven, uh, take a risk-driven approach to, to
to mature um, the security processes. Um, yeah, so. I think also, uh, to go back to the first slide, the, um, what was it called? We said the forced upon. That's usually what will, the case will be is that the bigger company or the acquiring company will force upon the smaller company their practices and possibly their software. So possibly if they have old software that's running, that'll be chucked out over time and you'll just uh, go with whatever the bigger company is doing. But as Karsten says, of, co of course, if there's a special need, they might try to plan out some, some kind of integration. Okay. Um, they are ready, uh, available for questions over email. If you're leaving the room, Please remember the system. You know the drill by now. Green means yay. Red means get out of here. Don't let them see it. You, you drop in a red card. And um, thank you for your attention.